Uh, how did I get into this mess? It's the same, same opening as last time. This is the first case of this game. That's far enough. You, can, you can't run forever, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Same exact opening. Which uh, actually kind of confused me because I thought we kind of somehow restarted the game. <laughs> but uh, we did not. This is just the same nightmare. Could not like to go on. Well, I'm just a simple defense attorney. Silence. I'll smack you with this giant gavel. Ha ha. And we are dead a third time. I've had this dream before, someplace, some time ago. Deja vu. As if this day was written into my destiny. Today I'll stand in court as a lawyer. To prove a killer innocent. Well, you gotta do what you gotta do. Phoenix, right? Moshi Moshi, this is Phoenix, right? You don't look so well, dude. You're gonna prove me not guilty today, right? He's back to his refreshing as a spring breeze persona. Oh, not anymore. <laughs> if you please, Mr. Lawyer. Remember, it's not just me. Your precious friend's life is a riding on today's verdict, too. <sighs> now listen up. You better get on guard at guilty sentence, okay? If you get that creepy slime bag and not guilty, I'll never forgive you, ever. Yeah, that's, a, that's the message that Maya left for us behind the photo, I guess. But um, how, how did she know about, I guess, Matt's, like, you know, uh, evilness? You know, how does she know that? Maybe she got it from, like, Mia? I don't know how Mia... I guess, I don't know. I guess Mia can, like, write down stuff and tell Maya all about the situation and everything. You know, maybe, maybe that's how Maya knows. Anyway. Phoenix. Phoenix. Oh. Mia. Maya. How's Maya? I don't know. You don't know? She hasn't tried to channel me since yesterday. Mia, what what am I supposed to do? Well, like I said, for a lawyer, the worst of the times are when you have to force your biggest smiles. But you can't give up. There's still some hope left. Stop it, please. There's nothing left. Not here, not anywhere. And the Steel Samurai ringtone again. Ah, it's that cursed on guard again. Will you leave me alone? Look, don't call me anymore. I mean it. You're really mean, pal. Oh, I'll gumshoe. Oh, I'm really sorry. Where are you? They let me join the investigation team. We're chasing after the killer, pal. Oh, then you have some sort of lead? I'm sorry, but right now we've got zero leads on the guy. But we're not going to give up. Gumshoe. Until the trial's over, until the verdict is handed down. We're gonna do everything we can and find the killer. If we get Maya out, then you can get on guard the guilty verdict he deserves, pal. That's true. I could do that if they found Maya first. You got that? So you have to do whatever you can to make the trial last longer. I have to make the trial last longer? If you go out Mr. Edgewood with everything you've got, then you two can draw it out. Oh, now I get it. I believe in you, pal. You and Mr. Edgeworth can do it. So, believe in us. We're gonna give it all that we've got, just like you. Got it. Thanks, Gumshoe. Yeah, Gumshoe. Hey, Phoenix. You understand now, don't you? You have something money will never be able to buy. Friendship. Oh, isn't that cliche? It's the strongest weapon in the world, and you can win all of the shonen anime battles with it. You have it in abundance. Yeah. Looks like we're coming to the end. I have to make the trial last as long as I can. Gumshoe will come through, I know it. I wonder how long we can extend this trial. I guess as long as I can. Hmm. 
What's the evidence? Okay, so yeah, this is this video reading file with many thin cuts. I wonder why. Why does it have the cuts in it? Photo, receipt for the stuffed bear, camera, transmitter, this card. Hmm. There's there's a bunch, a bunch of evidence here as well from the from the last trials. I don't know if they're any relevant anymore, but I guess we'll see. Court is now in session for the trial of Matt Ungard. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. Now, as I recall, we concluded yesterday's session with a big mystery on our hands. The mystery being what exactly was Miss Adrian Andrews' role in this murder? That is to say, is she really connected to the crime itself? Mr. Edgeworth, if you would please inform the court of today's proceedings. Adrian Andrews. She forged evidence that threw suspicion onto Mr. Ongard. And then proceeded to escape the crime scene by wearing a Nicol Samara costume. The guilt of these actions are those from which she cannot escape. Hmm. Then you're saying that she is guilty after all? I'm not finished, Your Honor. Miss, Ad A uh, Miss Andrews has nothing to do with committing the actual murder. I would like to direct the court's attention to this card. What is that? It looks like a shell. This is the calling card of a certain assassin. Assassin, you say? Yes, one Kruda was killed by a professional assassin. And the person who hired the assassin, his client, so to speak, is mad on guard. I wonder how expensive assassins are. <laughs> I don't know. Imagine a lot, considering you know, I mean, Matt, Matt himself is pretty rich, right? And I assume Shelly the Killer, you know, being an assassin, being an honorable assassin, charges a high price. What a surprising turn of events. I would think it's become commonplace by now, Your Honor. I know what's going on this time. So I know that everything Edro has said is true. But we still have to hold out as long as we can. At least until Maya is safe and sound. I wonder how the trial will turn out today. Now then, please call your first witness, Mr. Edgeworth. The prosecution calls the defendant's mentor, Mr. Will Powers, to the stand. Mentor, quote-unquote. Now then, witness, your name and occupation, please. Okay, I'm, uh, Will Powers. I'm a poor underpaid action star. And what is your relation to the defendant? Well, that's, I guess, some sort of a lousy mentor in a way, yeah. Like a senpai, I guess? A senpai? Uh, Mr. Powers, please, don't put yourself down so much. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I'm just kind of a nothing sort of a guy. On the night of the murder, you visited the defendant's room. It is, is this correct? Yes. Hmm, I didn't know that. Um, but you know, I didn't actually get to see Matt when I went. All you need to do is answer what you asked. Now then, I would like you to please testify about when you went to Mr. Ongard's room. Okay, sure. Hmm. I guess... I guess the reason why he didn't testify before is because he didn't think he had any relation to the murder because he didn't see Matt, but let's see. After the award ceremony, I went by myself to Matt's room. Matt was standing there in front of his room, still in his Nicol Samurai costume. Hmm, see who's that? Looks like a certain bellboy we saw before. He was talking with someone. At first I thought it was the bellboy. I watched the two of them for a while, but then gave up and went back. I had guesses with me that night, and I couldn't make them wait for me. You know, isn't it always a trope where um, someone is just hiding in like a really obvious disguise, and yet all the characters, especially you know, we saw the bellboy, we saw him in the butler co a costume, obviously, you know, like, but Phoenix didn't really recognize him at all, really. So, I wonder why. I, I again, it's just like a, it's like a it's like a trope, I guess, hiding in plain dis in plain disguise. Hmm. Nothing sounds out of place in Mr. Powers' testimony. 
Uh, then again, you know, maybe maybe Phoenix didn't notice because he didn't. It's not like he was looking for Shelly the Killer specifically, right? We didn't we we didn't know. At least the, the the players know, right? It's dramatic irony, I guess. The players know who Shelly the Killer looked like from the shadows we saw when, uh, from Maya's perspective. But Phoenix didn't know, so maybe he didn't put much thought into it. Hmm. And uh, talking with the bellboy is no big deal. Hmm. If one assumes that the person Miss Ongard was speaking with was an ordinary bellboy. What are you implying? Well, Mr. Wright, let's have your cross-examination, shall we? Looks like we're in another sticky situation. Huh? A trap. Can't, can't you smell it, Phoenix? Hmm, what do traps smell like? But for us to find out more, we're just gonna have to charge in head first, right? To Matt's room. The defendant's room? Why did you go there? Well, I'm his mentor, like a big brother of sorts, and I wanted to say congrats. <laughs> Anarchy. What's wrong? Why did you stop? M Mr. Wright. Uh, what is it? Y you, you're gonna try to trick me into a corner, aren't you? And play the cornered theme music. I know I'm just a poor underpaid action star, but... But I... I'm not the killer! Um, no one said you were, Mr. Powers. No, please! Don't trick me! Don't put your finger at me and yell objection! Every time you do your lawyer thing, the witness suddenly turns into a bad guy! Every time. Witness. I will personally talk to the defense at a later time. So for now, please kindly cooperate and continue with your testimony. Sorry. So you went to the defendant's room, and then? Hey, wait a minute. When and how did I suddenly turn into the bad guy here? <laughs> well, it is sort of true. It's sort of true. We always tend to find the bad guy within the courtroom somehow. You know, it's never the fact that the killer is, you know, n just not related, you know? Like, it's never the case that um, we don't find the killer. You know, ob well, obviously, for dramatic effect. But it's like... I guess what I'm trying to say here is like it's never the fact that we just never know the face of the killer. Like we don't, we like we don't know the name, like the of the killer. They don't just like you know just leave the country, you know. That we just never find the killer. Though I guess in this case maybe sort of. I mean we, we know the killer, the killer, in this sense, and he's not in this very room. Hmm. Anyway, nickel samurai costume. Are you sure that that was Matt on guard? Yeah, I'm sure. He wasn't wearing the Nickel Samurai mask then. Um, if that's the case, then he really can't be mistaken. And? What was the defendant doing standing in front of his own room? He's talking with someone. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Talking with a Bella boy. At first, what do you mean by that? Well, he was in a bellboyish uniform, and he had a bottle of juice on the tray. Sounds like an ordinary bellboy to me. Um, yeah, but I didn't think he was a normal bellboy. And why was that? Um, why did I think that, Mr. Wright? How am I supposed to know? Sorry, but I can't remember right now. Sorry. I guess I'm gonna have to wait patiently on this one. Watched the two of them for a while, but then I gave up and went back. You saw the two of them, the bellboy and the defendant, together, correct? Yeah, the bellboy just wanted to say congrats. Now, while you were watching the two of them, did you notice anything strange? Um, you know, I did feel something weird. I think it was because Matt, well, he gave the bellboy a tip. A tip? Well, that's, perfectly, that's a perfectly normal thing to do. How long did you watch the two of them? Um, no more than a few, a minute, a minute or two, I think. I guesses that night. So, who are these guesses you're talking about? Oh, you guys, of course. You and my and little Pearl. I thought it would be really rude since I invited you guys if I disappeared on you. So I went back to my seat pretty soon after seeing Matt in the hallway. Well, this is like squeezing water from a stone. It's probably pointless to press further. 
Well, do you remember this incident? Did Mr. Powers leave his seat that night? I don't remember that happening at all. Maya was making such a racket in her hyper state, I ended up focusing on her. I see. In any case, from his story, he probably wasn't gone for very long. Hmm. After the awards, yeah, I don't remember. It's like it's been a while. It's been a while, so I don't remember exactly what happened. After the award ceremony, I remember Maya, you know, saying how cool the uh, Nico Samurai is and everything. Otherwise, I don't remember Will Power specifically like leaving and coming back. I I remember Phoenix going to the washroom, but other than that, I don't remember. Hmm. Are you sure it was Mount Guard? Yeah. At first, what do you mean? That he was a normal bellboy? Why did I think that? Actually, Mr. Powers, well, only a few minutes ago you stated... You know, I did feel something weird, yeah. I think it was because he gave a tip. Well, could it be that you felt something strange about the tip-giving incident itself? Ah, yeah, that's it. You really know your job. Hmm, Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor? This bellboy, he wasn't an ordinary one, was he? Perhaps we should let the witness tell us. Very well. Mr. Powers, please amend your testimony. Oh, you mean about the bellboy, right? My Matt gave the bellboy a tip. So he gave the bellboy a tip. What's so strange about that? Oh, uh, well, you see, Matt's not a poor penny pincher like me. I was trying to figure out how much it was because the tip really shocked me. How much it was? Uh, but that's when something even more surprising happened. The bellboy was putting the tip he got in his pocket. And that's when I got my first good look at the guy's face. I was really shocked. Hmm, I'm afraid I don't fall at all. Well, it sounds like Mr. Powers was surprised twice by this event. I wonder which of his shocking moments should I ask about. Well, there was the face and there's the tip. Um, let's ask about the tip, I guess. Well, what's so wrong about the tip? How much was it? The defendant is a huge star. You can afford to give a generous tip. Uh, yeah, would you agree? I'm sure, but giving him that much was maybe a little too much, I think. A little too much? Would you please clarify for the court? About how much would you say the defendant gave the bellboy? Honestly, I don't know. I can't even begin to guess. And why is that? Because he gave the bellboy a really, really fat roll of cash. A roll of cash? Oh, well. How interesting. That certainly was a very generous tip, wasn't it? A very fat roll of cash. That can hardly be called a tip, your honor. Hmm. The judge is beginning to look awfully suspicious of us. Objection! Objection. The defendant is a superstar. That kind of a tip is typically typical fare for people like him. Objection. He's really rich. Are you saying that all superstars are super spenders? If I could receive large rolls of cash by simply bringing people things on trays, then why on earth would I be standing around here prosecuting? He's got a point. I don't even get paid, let alone rolls of cash for all my hard work. Do you not get paid? We don't know. We, don't, we never see, like, Phoenix's, like, income from all the cases he's done, you know? Hmm. <clears throat> so supposing that roll of cash was not a tip, then what was it? Payment, Your Honor. Payment? Isn't it obvious? For the murder of Juan Corrida, then... Then the bellboy the witness saw. Yes, he was the assassin. Oh, hold your horses now, Mr. Edgeworth. You don't have any proof of this, do you? Have I ever been unprepared to support my claims, Your Honor? I have here the car Shelly the Killer left for the scene of the crime. Shelly the Killer? He is the person the police's special investigations team has been chasing for ages. 
I am certain that the person the witness saw was his very assassin, Shelly the Killer. Oh, really? What's wrong, Mr. Powers? No, nothing. Something just clicked in my head and I think I just figured something out. Oh? Actually, I saw that bellboy again later on that night. What? Mr. Powers, please testify. Tell us what you saw. Uh, yes, sir, right away. This time, I was in that hallway because I had to go to the bathroom. And that's when that bellboy I saw earlier came out of the room. Of course, when I say room, I mean Hong Corda's room. Now that I think about it, that bellboy did seem kinda out of seem kinda out of place. Yeah, so he had to be the assassin, I'm sure of it. I mean I mean what? I mean that's it? Well thank you very much. That is all we need for now. Ah. Huh? But I'm not done, there's still more. Let us first establish that the bellboy was truly Mr. D Killer. Then we shall see. Hmm. So the bellboy came out of the victim's room. And if that bellboy really was the assassin, then I think the answer is fairly obvious. That would be correct, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, I believe it's your turn to entertain us and make us laugh. Ha ha ha. This is no laughing matter. Didn't you say the hardest times require the biggest smiles, Mia? Maybe we should laugh. I don't know. At what time was it? Oh, uh, well, I don't remember. The award ceremony ended around 8 p.m., right? And I went to Matt's room pretty soon after that, and then I came back. And then I went to the bathroom. Hmm. So I guess maybe it was around 8, 10 p.m. that time? You're not one for details, are you, Mr. Powers? Oh, uh, sorry. I thought I could maybe catch Matt and say my congrats. And that's when I saw the bellboy, I saw Ella came out of the room. Are you sure it was the same bellboy? Yeah. And how could you tell? All the bellboys wear the same uniform after all. But you see, well, he had those stitches in his face. Ugh. So I'm sure it's the same guy that was talking with Matt. Hmm, stitches on his face. Similar to a barcode on the back of your neck, you, you, you could say. So which room did the bellboy come out of? I mean, Hong Korda's room. The victim's room, huh? Yeah, the one with all the really pre pretty foul flowers and teddy bears. <clears throat> it was one room's alright. Words cannot describe how screwed I am. Hmm. <laughs> Let's continue with the testimony, shall we? Now think about it, the bellboy did seem kinda out of place. Um, so what exactly was so out of place about him? Right, right, right. Why the insipid grin? Maybe because I have no idea what damaging thing he's gonna say next. Um, well, the bellboy was empty-handed. Empty-handed? That bellboy was one of those room service people, right? But he wasn't pushing a cart or he wasn't holding a tray either. You'd call that a little strange too, wouldn't you? Hmm, I agree that it is a bit strange, Mr. Powers. But is it really that unusual for a bellboy to be empty-handed? What should I do? Should I let uh, Mr. Powers' testimony slide or... Try to pull a fast one, Ah, uh... uh, for now... You're right, I think it's pretty unusual too. Uh, I thought you might think so. Hmm. hmm. There's no need to say anything when the defense gives up without a fight. Let's move on. Anyway, Mr. Powers, you thought the bellboy was a little suspicious, correct? Hmm. Well, maybe again, then. Ah, uh, well, let's try again, actually. Try to pull a fast one. Maybe I should try to pull a fast one, because if he's like, I don't know, we should extend the trial as long as we can, right? Well, there's nothing strange or unusual about an empty-handed bellboy after all. Let me amend my statement. But there really, really is. There really, really isn't. 
If you two are done being school children, doublers are for room service. There's no reason for, be, for them to be empty handed, ever. Your Honor, I ask that the witness' previous statements be supplemented with this new one. Ah, <sighs> Edgeworth. Are you going to do whatever you can to make the bellboy look suspicious? I see. Very well. This court recognizes and grants the prosecution's request. Mr. Powers, if you could amend your testimony, please. Uh, yes, sir. I thought it was kind of strange for Bellwood to come out of a room guest's room empty-handed. Hmm. Uh, before that, though, let's press this statement, too. Well, please don't be so quick to judge. Uh, but it's kind of a Powers family thing. Think of every person as a thief. Well, I guess a thief and an assassin are both sneaky and silent. They have like a high stealth score. That's not the point, Phoenix. In any case, if that bellboy was the assassin, it would be very bad for us. But he really is the assassin, you know. Yes, but you can't give in yet if you want to prolong this trial as long as possible. You're going to have to pull some cheap tricks on this one. Cheap tricks, eh? So you say that it's suspicious for him to be empty-handed? Yeah, really suspicious. I mean, when I first saw that bellboy... He was holding a tray in his hand. And there was a bottle of juice and a wine glass on it. Juice? What kind of juice was it? Um, I'm pretty sure it was tomato juice. Well, we could come, some, well, come up with some re sort of reasons why he would come out empty-handed. Some sort of proof, then I think we can dodge the bullet on this one for now. Proof, huh? Sounds like another job for the core record! Whoa! Well, I mean... I mean, it's kind of obvious. It's because he came out empty-handed because he left this, uh... I guess, this wine glass there? He left the wine glass and the juice Act at the actual crime scene at Han Corridor's room. Correct? Well, Mr. Powers. Yes? <laughs> You're easily influenced by other people's words, aren't you? As soon as you heard that the bellboy might have been the killer, you got caught up in believing it must be true. But, but, isn't he really suspicious? He's got all those stitches and then... So? A baseball has stitches. <laughs> are you saying all baseballs are suspicious because they have stitches? <laughs> okay. Uh... Mm, mm. Well, there's also, I mean, what about him being empty-handed? I would like to ask the court to please take a look here. This is the crime scene. There is a wine glass sitting next to Mr. Corridor's body. The liquid inside this glass is tomato juice. And now, if you would look at what is on top of the table in the lower right corner here... Anyone can clearly see that it is a tray with a bottle of tomato juice on it. The bellboy had just brought this to Mr. Corda's room. He left the tray in the room, which is why he was empty-handed when he left. Oh, but that would mean that the bellboy had seen and left the dead body in the room. No, not exactly. Can you prove that Mr. Corridor was already dead at that time? Uh, Mr. Edgeworth? Yes? I blame you for leading me down this route. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. What is with him? Why is he laughing? Witness, isn't there one more thing you would like to share with us? Is there? The bellboy was empty-handed. Or should I say empty-hand-id? Well, hand -ed? I recall you had something inter interesting to say about his hands. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Huh? What? This, I guess this is the thing that Ezra stopped him from saying. Uh, that bellboy, he was wearing gloves. Gloves? Yeah, pitch black, pitch black leather, leather ones. Oh, the other bellboys don't wear gloves like that, right? Black leather gloves. Why didn't you mention them earlier? Sorry, it slipped my mind. Ah, boy, does this make the bellboy look really suspicious. Alright, gotta focus. Can't get lax here. So, what if he had gloves? A lot of bellboys wear gloves. Oh, come on, Mr. Wright. That bellboy was wearing black leather ones. 
So, a football is made of leather. Are you saying all footballs are suspicious because they are made of leather? She's making the same argument. <laughs> but that man, he received a large roll of cash from the defendant. And then he was seen leaving the crime scene wearing black leather gloves. I don't think that even someone like myself can believe he was just another bellboy. I don't know, maybe he likes black leather gloves and maybe he gave a little extra service to Matt, you know, that isn't assassin related. Mm -hmm, wink wink, no, um, uh. It seems that we have finally come to an understanding. Now then, witness, please continue with the rest of your testimony. The rest? Oh yes, please, tell us more. Okay. After leaving Juan's room, the bellboy went and knocked on Matt's door, just like that. Knock knock. He gave something to the person inside the room. Then the old guy just left, without even going into the room. After that, I went to the bathroom and then back to my seat. So the bellboy, after leaving the crime scene, next went to the defendant's room? Yeah, I kind of saw all that by accident. Some accident? I say you saw too much. And all of it was suspicious to high heaven. Hmm. I think it's safe to say that we can no longer consider this bellboy to be normal. Now then, let's get started, shall we? Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Yes, your honor. And I'm knocking Matt's door. Okay, you want to meet him again? Is that what you saw while you were busy spying? Uh, excuse me? I may be poor, to be a poor other paid action star, but even I wouldn't stoop to spying. Well, I think the point is, where did you wash all this from, Mr. Powers? Oh, um, from the door of the bathroom with my left eye and so I'm a sneaky spy like... I knew he was spy. <laughs> Please, does it really matter if he was doing it over or underhandedly? What did the bellboy do next? That's all I care to know. Uh, I gave something to the person inside the room. I said, hold it! Hold it! Um, okay. I think in Japanese, uh, Phoenix says, Mate! Mate! Which means like, wait! Wait up! Anyway, uh, that's better. <clears throat> what kind of statement is that? Please elaborate and give us a few more details. Oh, um, okay. I should probably ask him only one question at a time, though. Uh, I can... Well, I guess we can ask... I guess technically two things. So, uh, ask about the person inside, ask about this something. So, who took this something the bellboy handed off? Um, actually, I don't know. What do you mean? I'm sorry, but I only saw the person's arm. Only an arm? Then you're saying you didn't see the person's face? Yeah. Well, it was Mr. Ongar's room, correct? So it could only have been Mr. Ongar himself, I'd say. And then, what did the bellboy do after that? Oh, so after he gave the person inside the room the thing... Hmm, the thing. I guess we can also ask about that. Then he left. Where did this bellboy go after he left Mr. Ongar's room? Hmm, <laughs> he opened the door to the viola, viola hall, went in there, and who knows after that, right? Hmm, I do. I do. Oh, yeah. The Maya incident. Did you see anything strange, suspicious, or just out of the ordinary at that time? Oh, yeah, I saw that one thing. What? He saw something? What did he see? There was this generally alien with a ray gun. It was watching Juan's door like some sort of stalker. Hmm, oh, I think we know who that is already. I think we can forget about the alien. Well, Mr. Power's testimony just now was just as vague as his first. It's a little troublesome, isn't it? But I'm sure if you press him enough, everything will become clearer. Although, that just makes it harder on us, doesn't it? Ah, talk about a lose-lose situation. Okay, okay, well, I'm um, gonna have to press this sentence again, I think. Yeah, what is this something, did you see? He gave something to this person. Yeah. And what was this something? 
<laughs> if I remember what it was, I wouldn't be calling it a something, would I? But this implies that something was removed from the scene of the crime. Are you sure you really can't remember, Mr. Powers? Um, I think it was something kind of small. I would like to summarize the testimony up to this point, if you don't mind. When the ball boy left the crime scene, he immediately went to the defendant's room. There, he handed a small item of some sort to the person inside. As for the person who received the item, all you could see was the person's arm. Yes, yes, it was just like that. Mr. Edgeworth, is all this really that important? Of course, Your Honor. I think this is of the utmost importance. This is when whatever was removed from the crime scene was handed over to the client. Hmm. Mr. Powers, please try to remember what it was the bellboy handed off. Um, well, let's see. I think it was... no. If you remember, please add it to your testimony. Yes, sir. I, if I saw it again, I could say for sure, but I think it was some sort of wooden statue. A statue? Was it the thinker? <laughs> yeah, it kind of looked like one, I guess. If I saw the actual thing again, I'd probably remember, you know? Hmm, looks like for this trial to proceed, I'm gonna have to come up with whatever this statue thing is and show it to him. You're gonna have to trust your instinct on this one and take a chance, Phoenix. Well, Mr. Powers, let's continue. Hmm. I think we know. I mean, it's pretty obvious. Like, what, 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 what kind of wooden statue do we have in our court record? You know, in our pockets right now. The only thing we do have is this goddamn figurine. It's wooden and it's kind of like statue-based, I guess. No, oh, I wouldn't call it a statue. It's more like a, again, more like a teddy bear, I guess. What do you would call it? a doll? I would call it like a doll. You know, I wouldn't call it like a statue. But uh, I guess, yeah, here you go. Objection. What was the point of that pregnant pause? Where did that objection come from? Well, speak up. Uh, it was me, Your Honor. What is it, Phoenix? I have a feeling that something bad is going to happen once I show this. Mr. Wright, if you have something to say, please spit it out. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, Phoenix. Deep breaths. Mr. Powers, the something you saw... Was it this item? Oh, hey, that's it. That's the something. Wow, Mr. Wright, you really figured it out. Hmm, I recall we found this at Matt Ungard's mansion. At the defendant's house? What does this mean? It's simple, Your Honor. Shelly the killer assassinated Juan Cordes in his room, and then he stole this wooden bear from the scene of the crime. Then the bear being found in Mr. Ongar's mansion would mean... It goes without saying, Your Honor. Mr. Matt Ongar is the killer's client. Order, order, order. I said order. Mr. Wright, this is the most unfortunate turn of events for you. Yeah. Sorry, Mia. No, it's alright. Your judgment was sound. Actually, I figured the bear would come up. If not now, then it would have later on. Even if you hadn't shown it to the court, I'm sure your friend Edgeworth would have. Ah, I almost forgot that he knew about it too. Hmm. I think it is clear that there is no need for us to continue this trial. I can't let this happen. I have to do something. There has to be something we've overlooked. Uh, Your Honor, a minute, please. Yes, Mr. Wright. There are still a few points left that we have not fully explored. What are you trying to pull? Oh, well, we can't have that. Alright, Mr. Wright, what question or point would you like to explore further? Uh, Power's testimony. I yeah, we went through it already, so I there's no really real contradictions with Power's testimony, really. He saw what he saw, and there's no real reason for him to lie. He just couldn't, like, remember stuff specifically. The person who received the bear... I mean, I've kind of linked that itself already. We kind of linked that to, um... We already linked that to Matt, right? Because it ended up in Matt's on guard mansion. I mean, it could have been Adrian as well, though. Right? Because Adrian was also uh, in uh, Matt on guard's room. Somewhat, as well. Maybe. And she could have planted that bear in Matt's room as well. Let's get another framing device, maybe. 
The bear itself is also suspicious. It's like, why is he handing a bear to Matt in the first place? Like, well, well what does the bear have to do with this? So I'm gonna say the bear because why? Why? Why is the bear important? Like, why is it important enough for him to kill? Why would the assassin kill someone and then grab the bear itself? That makes no sense. You know why would? Unless Matt asked for it, I guess. But why? I think it's fairly obvious that the bear itself is very questionable. The bear, Mr. Wright. But this was found at Mr. Ongar's mansion. However, Mr. Ongar was arrested at the hotel that night. Which means that since the murder occurred, he has not a chance to go home. Oh, well, that's a good point, actually. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Like, why would it end up in Mount Ongar's room? He didn't even go home yet. You know, we even fed, sh like, well, we were told to feed Shu's cat. For some reason, even though he had a butler, even though that butler, I guess, was the assassin, so we didn't really need to go to his house. Anyway, I think Your Honor was already figure has already figured out what I'm trying to say. It is not possible that it was Mister On Guard who took this bear to his mansion. Why? That's very true. We didn't consider that point, Mister Wright. There is no way, time-wise, for the defendant to have taken this bear home. Oh, disaster averted. That You haven't gotten the best of me yet, Mr. Wright. Huh? I remember clear as day. I remember what you muttered to yourself at Ongar's mansion. Okay, well, what do we say? We have this area completely surrounded. There's no way for him to escape. I can't believe it. That butler. All this time, he was the killer. The killer and Ongar were working together, so to speak. And the killer was hiding at Ongard Mansion, as its butler. But what a bold move! The bear figurine was bought, uh, was brought back to Ongard Mansion by the killer himself. When it looked like he was about to be arrested, Ongard had him do so. I assume because it would have been bad had the police found it during their investigation. Hmm. Okay, so he stole, stole it from the room, gave it to Matt, and then Matt gave it back to the killer to put it in his house, I guess. Well, Mr. Wright, you've been quiet for a while now. Ah, this is too much. Is there anything I can attack at all? I have to try. I have to find something else. What will you do now, Mr. Wright? Do you plan to... Well, I plan to clear, expose a clearly shaky place in Mr. Power's testimony. What? Is there still another one? Oh, there is indeed, Your Honor, and it's quite a questionable point. What are you trying to pull? Again. Oh well, we can't have that. Alright, Mr. Wright, what questionable point would you expect would like to explore further? Okay. So, I guess that was a dud. What about uh, the person who received the bear? You know, we didn't see exactly who it was. We assume it's Matt because it went back in Matt's mansion. But because, because we asked about the bear, right? It could have been someone else. Because it wasn't Matt that put the bear in his mansion, it was the killer, supposedly. At least that's Edgeworth's theory. Well, there was one thing in Mr. Power's testimony that was very unclear. And that is the identity of the person who received the bear. Yeah, he gave something to the person inside the room. I couldn't see what it was, only the arm. Well, as long as we don't know who it was that took the bear... We can't be sure of... Okay. What is it, Mr. Powers? If you're gonna scream like that, then at least give us a good reason why. Oh, yeah, sorry. Actually, so, I remembered. Um, I remembered who took the bear. What? Really? I mean, I only saw his arm. But, but, uh, the arm. It was the Nickel Samurai's arm, I swear it! You've gotta be kidding me. Are you sure of that, Mr. Powers? Yeah, I'm sure it was the Nickel Samurai. Order, order. It looks like you've dug your own grave, yet again. How many times is that today? I've lost count. So the person who took in this little bear was the Nickel Samurai. And as we all know, Matt on guard is a Nickel Samurai. Well, thanks to the defense, we've made that all the clearer. 
I think we've heard enough. We now know why this bear figurine was at the defendant's mansion. As well as who it was that received the bear from the assassin in his room. Everything has become very clear. The client who hired the assassin to commit the murder was Matt, Mr. Matt on guard. I see no reason for this trial to continue. Therefore, I will now hand out my verdict. Well, thank you, Your Honor, for your understanding. You see, Mr. Wright, you could not win against the truth, could you? I knew it would turn out this way. After all, what Edgeworth has stated is the truth. Any last objections, Mr. Wright? Well, do I? What should I do? Of course I'm gonna raise an objection. Can't give up now. There's only one way for me to drag this trial out. The only thing I have left is this one dirty trick. One dirty trick that lawyers don't want you to know about. Your Honor, right now we have these two reasons to believe my client is the assassin's client. Reason number one, he accepted the bear figurine from the assassin. Reason number two, that the very same figurine was found at On Guard Mansion. However, it's possible that this is all the work of a certain other person. What are you saying? What I am saying is, it's possible a different person is the killer's real client. The real client? Yes. This disc, is this all you have? Now then, Mr. Wright, let's hear your theory. Who do you say is the killer's real client and therefore the real murderer? It was John Doe. Wait, the client was his own client. Um, Adrian. I think it's Adrian because who had acts who like in this entire case also wore the Nickel Samurai costume. It was Adrian. You know who had, who knows where Matt on guard lives and was in his room. You know, or at least had access to his room. There's only one possibility. It's Miss A A. Adrian Andrews? Yes. We already know that she tried to frame Matt on guard for the crime. By wearing a spare Nickel Samurai costume. Oh. Then, then the Nickel Samurai's arm that I saw. That could have very been, uh, very well been Miss Andrews. But what about Mr. On guard? If you would please recall yesterday's testimony. The defendant was taking a nap during the break period. That's right. Then, finding this figure at Mr. Ongard's mansion, it was a well-laid trap set by Miss Andrews. Mr. Edgeworth, what is your opinion on this? I can't even begin to count the flaws in the defense's logic. Besides which, there is no evidence to support it. However, I can't fully discount its possibility either. Hmm. Now what else on this trial? Come on, anyone can tell and on guard it. I can't believe the defense will go so far as to pay the guilt on someone else. What a scummy lawyer. Yeah, unbelievable. It's not something petty. It's murder. Wow. This is to save Maya, this is to save Maya, this is to save Maya, this is to save Maya. Even if the whole world turns against me, this is one fight I can't give up on. Order, order, order. All disruptive parties will be forced to leave the courtroom. Your Honor. For the benefit of the defense, I'm willing to play along with his what-if game. His what-if game, Mr. Edward. The prosecution is prepared to challenge the defense's theory. Mr. Wright, even you must have thought it strange and wondered, why would the criminal want this little wooden bear? He's right. The killer did specially bring that bear to on guard right away. Why do you ask? Is there something special about it? Absolutely. And I'm sure that once the court knows its significance, the true killer's identity will become crystal clear. Your Honor, the prosecution calls upon the witness who will clear all doubts against Miss Andrews. And who will that be? It's quite simple, Your Honor. Miss Adrian Andrews herself. I see. Well then, the court will take a short 10 minute recess. The prosecution will prepare its witness in that time. Yes, your honor. Recess time! Wow! 
All right, we're gonna summon Adrian. <laughs> oh, I knew it was a good idea to hold her hostage. Don't you agree, Mr. Lawyer? But I never thought in your desperation you try to pin the guilt on the Adrian. I swear this demon will pay. Just like, just punch him in the face. Just kill him right now. No, I guess we can't do that. If we do that, you know, we're gonna be charged for murder instead. Mr. Nick. Pearls? Where's Mia? I, I don't know. A really strong power suddenly called her away. Oh, really strong power. I guess Maya? Oh, Mr. Nick, your phone is... Like some gumshoe. Uh, how's it going? Have you been hanging there, pal? Uh, yeah, sort of. We just barely found something to latch onto. Ah, oh, phew. That's good, pal. What about you? Anything yet? Have you figured out where the killer and Maya are? Um, we just don't have any leads, but... What? We don't have any more time! If we just had one, even a single clue would be really helpful. I was only able to come this far because I kept thinking to myself, I've got to keep the trial going until Maya has been rescued. But have I just run out of luck this time? Is all our hope for naught? Attend. Attend? Huh? Attend? I could see a circus tent. Mia. It looks like Maya was unconscious until just a few minutes ago. As soon as she woke up, she called for me. So it was Maya that called you away. She's locked in a dusty little room right now. But I could see a circus tent outside the window, about 300 feet away. Gumshoe, is there a circus in town right now? Uh, there's only one, pal. The very big circus. Yeah, it's the case we did before. Well, Maya is somewhere within a 300-foot radius of the main tent. What? Okay, hold on a sec, pal. Hey, draw a circle on the map. About a 300-foot radius from the main tent. Hurry! And... And? I could see a mailbox under the window just outside. A uh, gumshoe, there's also a mailbox. Hmm, okay, what else? Uh, what else, Mia? I'm sorry, but it was a very small window. I couldn't see anything else. It felt like I was in an old office building. Maybe the third floor or so. Ah, I heard her. An office building. Good stuff, pal. Okay, just hang in there. Just a little longer, pal. Wish us luck. Uh, good luck. I'll call you later, so don't let your battery die, okay, pal? Ah, Mia, Mai's not hurt, right? She's in a pretty bad state, Phoenix. She's being starved. Oh no, no hamburgers. She's gonna die because she has like four stomachs. And if she doesn't consume burgers and like right now, like every five seconds, she's going to waste away. Oh no. <sighs> Looks like we're out of time. Are we out, Phoenix? Are you all right? It's only a matter of time before Mai's rescued. It's also, by the way, it's also kind of convenient, you know, that we can like... Just like, you know, that we can we have Mia that can just see where Maya is. Makes it a lot easier, because otherwise, she would definitely die <laughs> if she didn't have her spirit channeling hacks. But anyway, I can do this. I just have to make this trial last a little longer. There's light at the end of the tunnel. As long as we save Maya, then we can immediately just say, Oh, never mind, never mind. All, all I said were just lies. By the way, my defendant, my uh, my client is totally guilty. He has weird, like, scars on his face, and he's very smug. as like a wine glass, you know? He's totally evil, by the way, so just I just give up. He's totally guilty. Anyway, a court will now reconvene. The killer, the man who murdered the victim, handed this to his client. From this, one obvious question arises. Why this particular item? I believe the answer to that question will provide us with the name of the real culprit. Now then, the prosecution calls the defendant's manager, Adrian Andrews, to the stand. Okay, let me just save actually. We didn't well, we didn't really have an option to save, I think. You know, normally we get a checkpoint after like a recess, but I think I should just save here anyway. Uh, anyway, uh, currently, the witness is accused of tampering and obstruction of justice. However, you have been called to the witness stand today to ascertain who exactly is guilty of murder. I understand. Very good. Now, have you ever seen this bear before, Miss Andrews? Of course I have. Do you have seen it before? That's right. It's only natural that the witness has. Miss Andrews. 
Could you please enlighten the court to this bear's secrets? Alright. Why? Why is she... Hmm. What does she know about this figurine? Actually, this is an elaborate puzzle. If you know the correct order, it can be taken apart one piece at a time. At its center is a small cavity, with just enough room to store a small item. Because of its complexity, if you don't know the order, you can't open the bear. You really can't tell that it's a small jewelry box just by looking at it. So this figurine, it's a container of sorts, is it? Yes. Looks can be deceiving, wouldn't you agree? Yes, this is a su this is superb craftsmanship. Oh, yes. I nearly forgot. You may begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. It looks like there was really was something to that bear after all. Hmm. Why do you know this, and what's inside it? Just jewelry? A puzzle. That's right. Hmm, but it looks like an ordinary figurine. But true enough, to people who don't know, I'm sure they would never guess that this was a puzzle. <clears throat> Excuse. This was a puzzle? Like uh, how a statue looks like an alarm clock. <laughs> so what kind of puzzle is this exactly? If you know the correct order, it can be taken apart. So you can take it apart. And how would one go about doing that? Well, you first turn its tail to the right, then push it in. Oh, yes, I see. After that, the arms and legs are free to move, and can be removed. Oh, hmm, yes, this is the most interesting... <laughs> boy and his new toy. It's like he's five all over again. You know, I imagine if this was the D, you know, if there was like a remake of this case on a DS version or something. Because I know in the, the Rise from the Ashes case, in the first game that was added in the DS uh, trilogy, they put a lot of like a puzzle mini games. I wonder if, the, if this case was made then, you know, they could like uh, made it so we can actually take, take apart bear itself, you know, ourselves, but I guess not. Oh, don't mind me, go ahead and carry on. I'm just doing a little mini game. I think he's lost it. So what do you what do you do after, what do you find after you take the puzzle apart? At its center is something of a small item, I guess. And how do you know about this? I know because I was the one who bought it. Huh? It was a souvenir from when a friend and I went to Switzerland. Then this this was a present from you? That's right. It was a puzzle in the shape of a bear, so I thought it'd be perfect for Han. So it was a present from Miss Andrews. Witness, let's continue. So who exactly knew how to solve this puzzle? Only the two of us, Juan and myself. It was a souvenir from Switzerland, so I doubt there are many people with this same bear in this country. But this looks like it could be easily broken, especially if someone wanted to get at what's inside. Well, it's a toy. But it can never be the same again once it's been broken. Hmm. I guess that's why it has like small cuts. It's not so much that someone was. I was thinking like someone was using a knife to cut the bear for some reason. They really hate bears. Uh, but actually, it's like a puzzle, I guess. Hmm. Oh, who else knows that this bear is actually a small container or a jewelry box? I never told anyone. And as long as Juan never told anyone either, then only the two of us knew. The two of you, huh? Then of course that means Mr. Ongar didn't know, right? I think this is about all I'm gonna get for now. Hmm. Only Corridor and Andrews know how to open it. Well, Mr. Wright, I think even you have come to realize that there's one very important fact we have uncovered, and that is this. This bear is actually a jewelry box. Hmm. Now that we have agreed to this point, there is only one logical question that can come next. That is this. What is inside this box? What's inside? That's right. That's what we are going to find out next. Witness? Yes? You are the only one who can open this. Please. 
Okay, you just watch her open the, the, the bear. There's a painful silence hanging over the room. All eyes are on Miss Andrews now as she solves the puzzle and takes the bear apart, limb by limb. It's really terrifying when you think about it. I've opened it. Is this what you wanted? What is that? It looks like a note. I don't think we need to guess what that is, do we, Mr. Wright? Yeah, if you imagine, you know, the bear just like... Uh, just taking part by bit by bit. You know, like all the legs, its tail, its arms, and its eyes, and mouth, and nose, and its head. And you see its organs, just pull them out, the intestines. Anyway. It's the suicide note. Oh. That's what was hidden in the jewelry box? The suicide note. The suicide note left by Juan Corridor's former manager, Celeste Inpax. Until now, no one knew of its whereabouts, but just as we suspected, it was hidden. Hidden by the victim, Juan Corridor himself. Hmm. That's interesting. You know, I always thought that Adrian did not know where the suicide note was. But if she was the one that gave the present to Juan, and she, only she and him knew how to open it, then I guess she would have known about the suicide note after all. Hmm. It seems Celeste Impacts had very beautiful handwriting, and she just as beautifully signed her own name on this document. This is most definitely the note she left right before she committed suicide. Order! Witness, did you know about this? Yes, I did. I heard all about it from Juan. When I discovered his body, I looked for the bear. I wanted to destroy the note before it became public. Okay, so that's why she wanted to destroy it. Less so about finding it in the first place, more that she wanted to burn it. You know, that's what she said. I wondered why, but I guess, yeah. That's why. But I couldn't find it anywhere. Hmm. Because it already, had already been taken by the killer. Yeah, okay, so it wasn't... She couldn't find it, not because she, she didn't know where it was, or rather, she didn't know what it was in. More so, someone moved the box itself. Oh, okay. It has already been taken by the killer. Everything is going at Mr. Edgeworth's pace. So now that the suicide note has been found, what's the next logical question? Well, what is written on the note? Yeah, what does it say? That's right. At least that's what I would think. Now then, I believe it is only appropriate the contents of this note be made known. I can't stop you, can I? I went through so much just to get my hands on it, and I was going to burn it for her sake. I'm deeply sorry, but I can't allow you to persuade me to stop. Your Honor, if you could please read the contents of the note aloud. Very well. The judge's voice rang loud and clear through the deathly silent courtroom. In her note, Celeste Impax left to us a record of all that had happened to her. About being used and then thrown away by Engard. About being engaged to Corrida and Engard's role in destroying that. And about how she decided, in her despair, to end it all. Zetsubo! Boop 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 boop. And that's all Miss Impacts had to say. There's one thing I would like to say here. The prosecution has no interest in slandering Miss Ongard. Then what? Our intention, Your Honor, is to establish a motive for murder. Isn't that correct, witness? Yes. On the night of the murder, Juan was going to make the contents of the note public. After the post-ceremony show, he was going to hold a press conference. My word. Modern guard values above all else, he is refreshing like a spring breeze image. Which is why he had to stop this note from being made public. At any cost. Okay, well we don't really know exactly his uh, horrible misdeeds are. But I guess, you know, in general, being abused by on guard. The guard thought that the woman killed herself. This time, he even went so far as to kill someone to stop him from revealing that. Oh no! How terrible! What a selfish person! I guess there are there are slime balls lawyers out there who will defend these creeps too. What a slime ball lawyer we are! There's no room for doubt here. 
Yeah, so let's not near it. Yeah. Oh. Mr. D. Killer's client go, uh, client's goal was to obtain this suicide note. And the only person who needed this note that bad that badly is the defendant. Let's not forget that the barrel with the note inside was found at the defendant's house. It seems that we've come to the truth at last. The defendant's motives were entirely selfish. He deserves no sympathy from anyone. How am I supposed to escape from this one? Why the hesitation, Phoenix? Gumshoe hasn't called yet, so you know what you must do. I know. I have to carry on and buy him some more time. Okay, so there are two deadly pieces of evidence. The figurine and the suicide note. Maybe somehow I can find a way out of this situation through one of those. The gavel is already in the judge's hand. Phoenix, hurry. The suicide note or the figurine. Which one of these should I pursue? Hmm. A tells of Vanguard's horrible misdeeds. Or the figurine. Well, I was thinking, like, how would Matt know the suicide note was in that figurine in the first place? Only Juan and uh, Andrews knows about it, right? So why would Matt tell the assassin to get the figurine in the first place? Uh, please wait, your honor. Oh man, look at that lawyer. He's still going at it, what an asshole. It's like he doesn't care that he's trying to get a killer off the hook. The assassin took this with him from the crime scene after murdering Mr. Corrida. At the request of his client, of course. So what's your point, Mr. Wright? <laughs> everyone, everyone, everyone's still like... Rabble, 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 rabble. Could the, could the audience shut up, please? I'm trying to talk. I don't think it's possible that Mr. De Killer's client was mad on guard. In fact, I think there's a contradiction here. You can't tell by just looking at it that this bear is really a jewelry box. The chances that Matt on guard thought the note was inside this bear are zero to none. And there you go, the audience shuts up. Oh, I didn't think of it that way. Exactly. But I did think of it that way, and I thought it was rather strange. After all, there's no reason why Mr. On Guard would ever want a jewelry box like this. Order, order, order. You make a valid point, Mr. Wright. Mr. Ezra, what is your opinion? It was just a flash, but I think I did rather well on this one. Unfortunately, I think he believes differently. I believe a show of appreciation is in order. Mom, the defense seems to be in love with wishing more despair upon itself. I would like to direct the court's attention to this. What is that? It is a very small video camera, Your Honor. This type of camera is commonly used as a means of spying. Spying? What the? I thought that spy camera was in my possession. I guess not. Is it? I thought... Wait, what? Well, we have this, I guess. Well, then again, maybe he has a copy? I mean, yeah, we, if I remember correctly, Edgeworth did say that it's a common model, right? Anyone could get this, so he probably just bought it himself. Uh, Madan Gar and the victim both thought of the other as their biggest rival. They even went so far as to use this type of item to find each other's weaknesses. Um, the victim, Juan Corrida, was being spied on. His personal life was being watched by none other than Madan Gard. Order, order! <clears throat> Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. You don't tell me you knew about your client's spying activities. Well, sort of. Sort of is not an acceptable answer, Mr. Wright. I see you're confused, Mr. Wright. You're probably thinking, but I have the camera that was in the stuffed bear's eye. But this camera that I have is not the same one. Last night I searched the victim's house on a hunch. Using this. Oh, Gumshoe's bug sweeper. By the way, Mr. Wright, the defense's fingerprints were found on this camera. Manongar's fingerprints were on there? Well, Phoenix, 
It looks like those cameras were hidden all over the place, huh? Yeah, there were more than one, I guess. What am I supposed to say to that evidence? So I guess, yeah, he didn't buy himself to make a point, rather, he just found another one. <laughs> I think this is the end. It's fairly obvious that Mr. Ongar learned of the suicide note through this. He was watching the victim all along. Oh, he got me good this time. I don't have anything to counter that. Hey, hey, that was what, that, what was that lawyer thinking? Mommy, is that man the bad killer guy? Sh shush, stop. Don't look at him. He has spiky hair. The way he's sweating is just so ew and nasty. Phoenix. Y yes, Chief? Have you figured out what you're going to do next yet? What am I going to do next? Does running away like a frightened child work? I know it seems like Mr. Edgeworth is very close to putting a lid on this case, but in his eagerness to prove his point, he forgot one very important thing. Well, what is it, Mia? There's a piece of evidence that he really should investigate. Something he should investigate? Well, um, what is it? Something he should investigate. Hmm. I would really hate to see the gut prosecutor get scolded for not remembering to look into the item when we had the when we had the chance. Why are you speaking riddles all of a sudden? Because you can't tell us the answer. Um What is it? Something else that he didn't look into. I mean, he mentioned the stuffed bear. And obviously the stuff that belongs to On Guard. There's a figurine, there's a suicide note found inside the figurine. This photo, I guess, which is found on On Guard's mansion, which is weird. Oh, then again, well, it's not weird. It was weird at the time, but now it makes sense, considering that uh, Celeste did have a relationship with Matt before. Transmitter? Change the footage, take my silence, I'm ready to transmit the data. Hmm. Mm. Let's go over this roof from 8 p.m. to for one hour. Hmm. All right, I think this time we finally understand everything. Well, Mr. Wright, you don't have any further objections, do you? What is this piece of evidence that Mia is talking about? Can I figure out what it is that still needs to be looked at, or should I let it go? Well, I have a, uh, I have a gut feeling. Maybe it's something to do with the camera, because we haven't seen the actual footage of the murder, right? And of course, ask Mia. Well, Mia's Mia's gonna say, "Hey, hey!" She's gonna give advice. Hey, think outside the box, Phoenix. He's not gonna tell us. Never gonna tell us. Never gonna tell us the answer. It'd be too easy if it, if it, if you always did that. Um, yeah. I have an objection, Your Honor. <laughs> that was about the weakest objection I've ever heard, Mr. Wright. Oh, how about that? Objection! Your Honor, the defense has no intention of letting this go so easily. You're beginning to sound desperate. That's just your imagination, Your Honor. I'm totally not desperate. Mr. Edgeworth, this is not like you at all. In your eagerness to prove your point, you've forgotten one very important thing. <laughs> Doesn't Phoenix always do that? Mia tells him of something and Phoenix just parrots her every time. Isn't that what I just said? So you're telling me that I forgot something. You're so close, Mr. Edgeworth. But there's something you really should examine about this piece of evidence. I don't know. I said to record victims room for 1 p.m. for one hour was running a time of the murder. Change the footage taken by the signal into railways and transmit the data. Was there something else I need to... Because there's, there's a well, there's like this evidence on the right here, like one, two, three, four, five here. This is all relevant that evidence that we found in the investigation prior. There's also a bunch of evidence here that I don't know if it's still relevant because it's all stuff that from before. You know, I'm not sure if I should look into these as well. Anything we now like, anything we know now that might change anything from here? I don't know. Hmm. You should examine. Examine yourself. Self-reflection. No, um... No! Ah, I need to examine my gray matter some more. Darn it! Hmm. 
forgot something. Forgot something. <laughs> That's funny, yeah, Mia Mia knows the answer, but we're just gonna lose and Mia's not gonna say anything. Well how about this? How about the same ideas? Same same idea, but instead of showing the bear, we show the actual receipt, which kind of makes our defendant guilty, but maybe we you know, we don't act we don't exactly say that. You know? Ah, I might be wrong. I might be wrong. Okay, if I well if I lose, I doesn't I just have to that's my punishment is starting over, I guess. I tend not to save scum, but well. I guess I saved that one point. You know, just like a manual checkpoint. But otherwise, I don't, I don't like to brute force everything. Well, let's see. This is my last chance. If I lose, well... No, I think this is wrong. Yeah. I die in real life. Hunger is guilty. Maya's dead. Everyone dies. And it's funny how Edgeworth knew about, you know, Maya being kidnapped, but yet he still makes us lose. Oh well. Let's try again. Okay, well, you know, by virtue of me just uh, already choosing a bunch of things, I know it's not this, not that, not this, not this, not that, not... Mm, well, I didn't show this yet, did I? Yeah, I don't think I did. And not this figurine. I already showed this figurine. So it's either this or that, or it could be completely something different. That's my... That's... We already narrowed down our choices. There's no... There's no doubt about it. It's inevitable now. So it's either this or that. It's kind of meta. Or it could be any, somewhere along of, like, any of these items, I guess. I'm, I'm really thinking is either this photo or this suicide note. Maybe we need to take another look at the suicide note? We don't, we don't know the details though. We ju it just says, like, it's in, in her handwriting. It says that she's been, you know, treated poorly by On Guard. And that Matt On Guard caught off the wedding, you know, because um, he told her new boyfriend that they were, they had a thing, I guess. And that's, she's depressed about it. So this Hannah? Hmm. So maybe we're trying to say that why is he still here? You know? If he did indeed found the note, then why didn't he already destroy it? In that case. And again, Adrian, you know, if she found the note, she would have destroyed it already as well, so I'm not sure. And then again, maybe she wanted to frame Matt. Now that's what I mean, that's what the reason she did everything was to frame Matt. So maybe what I'm trying to say is that if like, if Matt had his hands on a suicide note, and if he was the client, then why didn't he already destroy this note in the first place? Why is it planted in his house already? Wouldn't a certain someone want that, would they? A certain Adrian Andrews would have wanted that, right? Okay, here goes another dumb theory. Okay, so this dialogue is different, so that tells me it must be correct. Let's see, that is Miss Impact's suicide note, right? Hmm, who knows? Who knows? Wait, I don't get it still. It's not a suicide note. I mean, what? Edgeworth did say it was in her handwriting, it was signed in her signature, right? I mean, I, you, I guess you could say it could have belonged to anyone else, or it could have been forged, you know? Like, how do we know it's her handwriting in the first place? Uh, I'm not sure. Well, actually, we can... We can compare, we can actually, we can compare this photo with the actual suicide note to see if it was in her handwriting, but um, I guess Edgeworth doesn't have this photo, we do. But anyway. I mean, sure, this suicide note was found inside this bear. But this bear was in my possession until only a few moments ago. Which means... The handwriting on this suicide note has yet to be analyzed. Okay, well, gosh darn it. So it must, yeah, it is like that. I guess I got taken by Edgeworth's pace. You know, I assumed he already did the analysis. I thought he already did it. I thought he already did the handwriting th an analysis thing. But I guess I, I was just assuming that he did it. it. Edgeworth even made it seem like he already did it, but I guess he did it. Not yet. I so, as to whether this pitiful Pivotable, pivotable, pivotal, pivotal, pivotal. I can't say the word. As to whether this piece of evidence was really written by Miss Impacts or not, 
pivotal, 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 pivotal. That has yet to be even. It has yet to be even remotely confirmed. Mr. Wright, you can't seriously be suggesting, Mr. Wright. You are you saying this suicide note is a fake, Miss Andrews? You were the one who tried to pin this murder on Mr. On Guard. Who's to say you didn't create a fake suicide note and put it into the bear? How dare you? I mean, yeah, that would fit her motive as well, framing Matt and everything. I mean, I guess you could say she destroyed the original note and then made a new note, you know, to frame On Guard. Hmm. Your, Your Honor, the defense is indiscriminately accusing the witness again. There's no evidence linking the witness to the suicide note whatsoever. But if this is a fake, then the witness is the only person who could have made it. What? Recall the witness's testimony concerning this figurine. Yeah, she's the only one that can open it. The only person other than the victim who could have solved the puzzle is the witness herself. Ah, oh, there goes her seventh pair of glasses, I think. I don't know, I can't remember the counts. Miss Andrews, you wrote this note, didn't you? You wrote it so you could use it to frame Matt on guard. I... I did no such thing. Right. If you're going to pronounce this suicide note a fake, then show this court some evidence to support your claim. No, Mr. Edgeworth, you're the one who needs to present evidence. Also, for first I need to drink some water. <clears throat> that was a bit of an itchy throat. <clears throat> but yeah, Edgeworth, you're the one that needs to present evidence this time, not me. You're the one who presented the scrap paper's evidence. That means the burden of proof lies with you, the prosecution. I don't have to do a thing. Blah. That's enough. Mr. Edgeworth, can you confirm the handwriting on this suicide note? This is as the defense has stated. The handwriting has yet to be analyzed. If that's the case... It seems that yet again we have reached the point where the verdict is impossible. Im impossible? That's Bacana! This isn't good, Phoenix. The judge is going to carry this trial over one more day. I don't think Maya will physically be able to make it another day. She needs her burgers. I didn't want to have to do this, but I don't have a choice. I request that both the prosecution and defense further investigate Handwriting, handwriting on my butt. That's just a lawyer trying to buy more time. Angar is guilty. Look, my any idiot can tell you that. I think we've reached the end of the line. Guilty, guilty, guilty. What? Yeah, everyone just wants the guilty verdict. <laughs> what is that sound? It's Gumshoe. Hello, Gumshoe? Ugh. What is it? What is it with him? What's that a sigh? Where's Maya? What happened to the killer? He, uh... He got away. What? I'm sorry, pal. I really am. I don't know what to say besides I'm sorry. I wish there was some way to make it up to you. I really do. Anyway, what's going on? We found his hideout, pal. But the two of them were already gone. Again? They ran away again. How'd they do that? This is terrible. I'm gonna keep looking for them, pal. Don't you worry, I just need a little more time. But... Duh, don't tell me we don't... We don't have any more. Guilty, guilty, guilty. Death by beheading! Do you hear that? They're calling for his head. Literally. They're gonna execute him. Mr. Wright, I can't for us to come this far and... Oh, what is it? Oh, let me talk to Mr. Edgeworth. I, I can't do that. Mr. Wright, would you please get a hold of yourself? Yes, Your Honor. I'm about to end today's proceedings. You may take your phone calls after. Uh, hold on, Your Honor. Edgeworth, catch! <laughs> Yeah, that's how you throw the phone, it's kind of like... Anyway, Mr. Edgeworth, it's great phone throwing animation. Please, you've got to buy us some more time. 
court is in session. Whoop. I'm sorry, Your Honor. You were saying? Mr. Wright, this is a court of law. I'm sorry, Your Honor, but... I'm reluctant to do this, however. It appears that I have no choice but to suspend proceedings until tomorrow. <sighs> this time I can't really can't do anything. Court is now adjourned for the day. Please wait, Your Honor. The Edgeworth? They like I mean Gumshoe asked for more time and Edgeworth just like uh close the phone, but what is it, Mr. Edgeworth? I humbly request another three minutes of your honor's time. For what purpose? We can perform the necessary tests on this piece of evidence in that time. Hmm. But can you really obtain your results in 30 minutes? I believe we can, your honor. But wouldn't it be better if we adjourn for the day and reconvene tomorrow? 30 minutes, please, your honor. That's all I'm asking for. Yeah, please, Your Honor! We really want to extend the time of this trial for some reason, we can't tell you about that though. Very well. At the prosecution's request, this court will now take a 30 minute recess. But be advised that we will not allow another recess today. I'm not sure if this is helping or hurting us. The court will now take its final recess of the day. I'm sick and tired of sitting here all day, you know? <laughs> The judge really wants to go home. Too bad. Okay. Well, uh, let me just save real quick. Save! Right. Well, what's going on with my situation? The killer, it looks like he got away again. 30 minutes? We can't find her in that time. Ugh. Report. Ah, uh, is that Mr. Edgeworth? Uh, we don't have time, just spit it out. Right. It looks like we just missed him, sir. But the killer left a few things behind by accident in his rush to get away. A few things. Can we use any of them as evidence? Oh, ho, ho, ho. I thought you asked, pal. I've got the things he left with me right now and I'm on my way over. Really? That's odd. Any items like that are usually sent to the crime lab first. Oh, we don't have time to wait for those guys, sir. When those guys weren't looking, I swept the stuff and ran. What? Well, I'm not a detective anymore, so I had to. I'm really sorry, sir, but I've got to put the law on hold for now. Well, sounds bad. I hope he doesn't get in too much trouble over this. I mean, he already got fired. Can you do worse than that? I guess get, I get, you know, get to sent to prison. I guess. Well, if he gets to if he gets sent to prison, then I guess we're gonna have to defend him in court as well. With my hunk of junk car, I say I'll be there in about 20 minutes, sir. Don't worry, I'll be there. Wait for me. All right, just get in here in one piece. I want a mission. No one can stop me now, sir. No one. I'm pulling out all the stops and running every red light. Oh no. Items left behind by the murderer, huh? Maybe there's something among them that will be decisive enough to end this. Uh, what? Hey, what's wrong? Detective Gumshoe, answer me. No one can stop me. Uh, I guess Gumshoe's dead. Maya's dead, now Gumshoe's dead, everyone's just dying. What happened? It sounded like he had an accident. I'm guessing his cell phone broke as well. What was he thinking? We've got to hurry and call for help. We have no idea where he is. His cell phone is broken and he wasn't driving a patrol car, so no radio either. Also, if we don't get to those items before they do, the police will take possession of them. No! Death slam. I don't know what we slammed. I guess the wall. We can't let that happen. Well, if there's a way we can find out where he is, then we stand a chance. Hmm... Was there, wasn't there a certain someone that always shows up, you know, when Gumshoe's around? Why, oh why did Gumshoe have to get in an accident now? Is there any way to find out exactly where he is at this moment? There's no way! Well, there's a way, actually. 
I know a certain someone. That's right. There is a way. What? How? I'm sure we can find out where Detective Gumshoe is through this. Through... Von Karma, right? She has that little, like, GPS device attached to Gumshoe so she knows where he is. Why are you bringing up Francisco at a time like... Oh, I see. I'll try to get in contact with her. The chances are slim, but she's all we have. Francisca, will she even want to help us? I don't know. Edgeworth, what is it? I don't have any right to judge anyone ever again. I know my client's guilty. But what I'm doing now, I'm pinning the guilt onto someone totally innocent and using the evidence to do so. It might be my turn to say, Defense Attorney Phoenix Wright chooses death. Right. It doesn't suit someone like you to cry useless tears. Whether you did your job well or not, that can only be seen after the verdict has been decided. The verdict? Is Prosecutor Edgeworth here? Yes, Bailiff. There's a phone call for you, sir. They said it was extremely urgent. They're probably finished with a handwriting analysis. I'll have to go take this call. In the meantime, think hard about what it is you must do. Hmm. To be continued. Oh, okay, so there's a bit of a checkpoint here as well. I didn't need to save, uh... After all... Over here. Alright. 